this will be a quick essay slash rant that I wanted to do after I finished my Jordan Peterson essay. Because while I was writing it, I happened to look on Twist Twitter and I read this priceless tweet. Quote, YouTube has now declared war not only on free speech, but on democracy itself. Mark my words at YouTube. You've crossed the line and you're on the wrong side of history. Three dots, end quote. The context for this tweet is that apparently YouTube censored one of his interviews with the, unlikely, presidential candidate Robert Kennedy Jr. This is a special tweet because I think it embodies two cheesy political cliches at the same time. So let's dissect it. The phrase, you are on the wrong side of history, is used by both sides of the political spectrum, and it is equally idiotic. Who gets to decide what is the right side and what is the wrong side of history? You do? And you think that your own side is correct? Now that is a coincidence. But the real meat of this tweet is in the first paragraph, quote, YouTube has now declared war not only on free speech, but on democracy itself. The biggest problem that I see here is with the idea of free speech itself. No matter how smart you are, if you start an argument on false premises, you will reach incorrect answers. The whole argument hinges in the idea of free speech. Most conservatives will treat free speech as a holy institution that must not be disrespected and that YouTube is committing a grave sin by doing so. Fundamentally, the idea of free speech is that everybody has the right to express their opinions. However, most liberals and conservatives do restrict this by saying that free speech stops when your words harm somebody. So under this definition of free speech, everybody can say everything they want, except when it fucks with liberal principles. But this restriction depends on your definition of harm. And this also depends on your personal morality. A traditionalist would consider premarital sex to be harmful, while a progressive would consider misgendering to be harmful. Indeed, Jordan Peterson is not shy about calling for censorship for the things that he sees as harmful, or against the things that he sees as harmful. Seeing as he begged Elon Musk to ban trolls in Twitter, and he has repeatedly called for the arrest of therapists that encourage minors to go forward with a sex change. And yet he still talks about free speech as this holy thing that must not be violated for the sake of democracy, of course. But this makes no sense. How can somebody who calls for censorship also be in favor of free speech? My answer is actually quite simple. This free speech thing doesn't fucking exist. It's a myth. It's a political tool that everybody uses, but nobody believes in. Everybody on the right and on the left seems quite ready to censor people they disagree with and see as harmful. And if I were in a position of political power, would I use my power to censor the opinions which I would consider to be dangerous and harmful? Yes, I absolutely would. And anybody that tells you that they would not and, they would n and that they would never, ever censor someone are just being false to themselves. We all hold moral principles. And when these principles come into conflict with free speech, we have to decide which one is more important to us. Most free speech proponents care about free speech, of course, but they care even more about not harming others. So their ideal of free speech capitulates whenever it comes into conflict with their harm avoidance. So we can conclude that everybody across the political spectrum will abandon the idea of free speech as soon as it comes into conflict with a principle that is more important to them. Conservatives are willing to censor as long as this means protecting families and their children, and lefties are willing to censor in order to protect, for example, minorities from harm. But now I can hear a grumbling in my audience. Many people are saying the answer to this is free speech absolutism. Everybody should be able to say whatever they want 
and there should be no limits because in the free market of ideas the best ideas always win now i'm quite spe- well, quite skeptical about the existence of these free speech absolutists this is because that would presuppose that a person's highest moral value is liberty and not your own liberty but the liberty of others this means that free speech absolutists are willing to sacrifice every single moral principle in the name of the liberty of others who cares more about the right of others to express themselves than their own well-being or that of his family does such a person exist i think not we can test this right now close your eyes and imagine the ideology that you find most repulsive and now ask yourself would you sacrifice your life and your family's life so that they can keep expressing their bullshit i do think that people being able to express their thoughts is good however i have other principles that are more important to me than this one and based on this i can say that i am quite ready and willing to censor ideas that i consider as harmful but i am not somehow different than other people the only difference is that i am not a politician and i can be honest unlike the people that talk about free speech but do not believe in it this dishonesty is understandable it would be a bad look politically to say yes i would censor when given the power instead this idea of i don't agree with you with what you have to say but i am willing to die for your right to say it that just sounds better even though i am honestly convinced that it is fake this would leave us with a conclusion that truly free speech is a utopian fantasy that will not exist because there will always be someone in power and whoever this is will have moral principles that will come into conflict with absolutely free speech furthermore we could say that every time that somebody invokes the words free and speech they are doing so because it is strategic it is a way of defending themselves against enemy censorship everybody is in favor of free speech when they are being censored but such ideals disappear whenever they have the power to censor other ideas they dislike we can conclude that whenever somebody mentions free speech it is not because they believe in such a thing but because they lack the political power to be able to censor others and are being censored themselves everybody is a pacifist when they don't have the gun